Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Croatia once again for the first time in what feels like a good little while. So we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. This is going to be review number four from these guys, if memory serves me correctly. But the beers that I've had from them so far have been pretty nice. And the one that we're looking at today is a style category that I know these guys are very capable of. So uh, yeah, curious to see what it's going to have in store for us. And it's always nice to review some Croatian beers as well because they don't find their way up here to Sweden all that often. So hopefully this is another good one. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to Zagreb, the Croatian capital. And we're going to have a look at another beer from the Garden Brewery. So this particular beer is called Imperial Salted Caramel and Chocolate biscuit stout it comes in at 8.1 percent abv and as i think you can gather from the name this one is an imperial pastry stout at 8.1 percent though it is a little bit lower on the abv scale compared to some other imperial stouts that we've come across in recent times but it should be quite interesting nonetheless now as i've said on the channel as well i'm not a massive fan of pastry stouts i'm a bit more of a fan of kind of sweet stouts and uh and you know the likes of the old school Russian Imperial Stouts and stuff like this. But it's not, it's not all that often that you come across a Croatian craft beer here in Sweden. So I thought this is one that I really need to take a look at. So hopefully this is one of the pastry stouts that I do enjoy actually. But this beer was released as part of the Tilferig Sortiment through Systembolaget here in Sweden for February of 2022. I forget the exact date that it was released. But uh, yeah, it was sometime in the middle of February that we got this beer but let's crack on with it then and see how we go so as always with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from the garden brewery before and hopefully we can add more to that list in the near future along with some other croatian breweries i think it's only uh, nova runda uh, that are the other one that I've reviewed on the channel so far, but let me know some of those Croatian uh, breweries and things like that. Uh, but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefetch, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Croatian beers that I've reviewed for you, but there's not too many in that. Fingers crossed we can get more into it in the near future but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit more about the garden brewery so the garden brewery as i've told you already are based in zagreb which is the croatian capital in the kind of northwest ish of the country but the company was founded by Nick Colgan and David Plant. So Nick is from Birmingham in England and he's a music promoter who's worked all over the world but back in 2006 he visited Tisno and he's been instrumental in helping this area make its name as a music, music festival destination but a lot of the music festivals that take place there are small and quite intimate in nature. But while organising the event one year, Nick complained to David that they had to sell one of the big brands of beer at the festival. And so David suggested that he make his own beer and it just kind of spiralled from there. They kept making bigger and better beers and stuff like this. And then eventually they decided they were going to found a commercial company. So this brewery were the first in Croatia to make their beers available in the cans and they've had great success in doing this actually. But in 2016 they began their exports to Germany and they've spread throughout Europe ever since. So the brewery itself is located in the southeastern part of Zagreb but the guys behind the brewery also own the Garden Resort in Tisno on the Dalmatia coast, Barbarella's Discotheque in Pirovats and the Garden Lounge in Zadar. But they recruited Nick Calder Scholes as the brewer from Four Pure in London, and he was replaced a little bit later on by Tom O'Hara, who remains in charge of production. Uh, but over the last few years, they've been increasing their exports, and as of March 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 185 different kinds of beer. So uh, yeah, they have been doing it very, very well. And as I say, these guys, along with Nova Runda, and a couple of others have been helping promote craft beer 
in Croatia. Uh, because of Croatia's history with the Austro-Hungarian Empire, beer, like traditional lager beers and stuff like this, do actually have a little bit of a hold, from what I understand. But uh, yeah, it's definitely cool to see that the craft beer bug is spreading to uh, Croatia and more and more breweries are popping up. So long may that continue. But yeah, hopefully when I visit Croatia later this year, I can pick up a few other uh, a few beers from other craft breweries and things like that and introduce those on the channel. That would certainly be very, very cool. But uh, yeah, that is all I can tell you about the Garden Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for the history section then and we'll get a look at the beer itself. So just to let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up, uh, as you can see, there is the symbol for the Garden Brew, which I believe has been remodeled quite recently, but they have been releasing quite a few pastry stouts like this in these big 440 milliliter cans. The beers that I've reviewed previously from the Garden Brewery have all been in smaller, 330s. So I don't know if the 440s are just what they're kind of uh, going with um, these days. But yeah, you can see the website address down there, um, the Garden Brewery. Uh, yeah, gardenbrewery.hr Hravska, if I remember right, uh, as they say in Croatia. But uh, yeah, 440 milliliter can this one. I think we paid about 50 Swedish kroner for this. So that's about five euros, uh, maybe about four pounds sterling, just about that. And I guess in the region of six American dollars, somewhere along those lines. But um, yeah, I think this one. Uh, it should be quite nice. It tells you the malt base in this one, which of course is what we're interested in when we're talking about a stout. As I said, this is an 8.1% uh, imperial pastry stout. It says the malt base in this one is Best Ale, Cara, Dark Crystal, DRC, Munich Chocolate Black, Rolled Oats, Golden Naked Oats. Uh, so yeah, that's quite an impressive malt base. And the hops in this one uh, are, it's just Columbus. And there's a few adjuncts, yeah, cocoa, biscuit flavour, and sea salt so yeah this should be pretty damn interesting actually but uh yeah looking forward to this lovely sounding beer i have to say and that was the main reason why i decided to uh, to go for this one but let's crack it open then and see how we got on the imperial salted caramel and chocolate biscuits out from the garden brewery in zagreb in croatia so uh yeah we'll get this guy out and into the glass. This looks good actually. I'm curious to see what this is like. Um, as I've mentioned to you before, one of the reasons that I'm, I've not been a great fan of uh, pastry stouts historically is the kind of granola flavour that you get in the base, in the sort of malt base from these. As I say, I'm more of a fan of like imperial milk stouts and uh, stuff like this, or the old school Russian imperial stouts. So I'm curious to see what um, Garden Brewery are going to do because I think the last dark beer that I had from these guys was like an imperial porter if I remember correctly but um, yeah anyway as you can see this beer has poured very nicely before the head disappears I think it's safe to say that this beer's poured with about a quarter to a one-third finger of a frothy I would say medium beige head Um, that's fading away very quickly though to be a very thin foamy layer but round the edge of the glass there's a nice big kind of thick uh, ring there one or two big bubbles in that ring though, and a few other ones uh, just kind of sitting below. But there you can see, the camera's going to focus on that. It does have a nice little bit of foam to it, but a lovely looking beer, I have to say. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look pretty nice, I have to say. In terms of colour, as we can obviously see, this one is a very dark sort of ebony rosewood colour. As I've said to you before, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of uh, malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. And I mean, when you've got um, dark crystal, chocolate and black malts and stuff like that in here, that would make absolute sense. The length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. I'm not sure, when this is only 8.1%, I'm not sure how long the wort boil is going to be. A standard wort boil is, of course, 90 minutes. But uh, when it comes to big imperial stouts of this, they quite often uh, let them boil for a little bit 
longer than that, sometimes quite a lot longer, I should add. But um, yeah, any adjuncts and any bar uh, and any barrelation that you do can uh, also change the colour of the beer. But what, in terms of what you would expect from a, a kind of imperial pastry stout, if you like, this one is pretty much as we would um, expect from that uh, from that style bracket, if you like. So uh, yeah, nothing that we really need to nothing else we really need to say about the appearance of this beer. It's exactly what you would expect. From the uh, the style, lovely dark ebony rosewood color with a bit of a kind of light fawn beigey colored head. So let's um, let's uh, have a little look at the aroma of this one then and see how we go. So yeah, oh that does smell nice. I'm going to say straight away the aroma of this beer is very very nice. Yeah, um, it actually reminds me. It really does remind me of some of these big, um, it really does remind me of some of these big kind of uh, cakey imperial stouts that we used to get from Omnicoil back in the day. The likes of the Noah Pecan Mud Pie, the Yellow Belly, uh, Agamemnon, these kind of things. It really does remind me of some of those crazy beers actually. Um, yeah, that smells very, very nice. I'm just going to say straight away to uh, to Garden Brewery, thumbs up on the aroma of this. If this is, if you ever wanted a beer to get you excited from the smell, this is one that is certainly going to do it. So I'm curious to see because this, um, if those, if I remember right, that those Omnipoil stouts were like you know 10, 12 percent and things like that. This one's only eight, but it certainly carries just as pungent an aroma. So that's quite exciting. So yeah, it's got this big oily, sweet, cakey sort of vibe to it. Yeah, um, so I do wonder, yeah, they're using, it says biscuit flavour, so it'll be flavour essence that's in this one, and of course that's what Omnipoil used to do with those beers, they used to fire flavour essence into them, but um, yeah, aroma wise, this is very, very nice, uh, so yeah, this is this is just crazy, so let's um, let's just break the aroma down for you, so the backbone of the beer, you can smell a wee touch, of like bread crusty and sort of brown bready character to it but other than that it's this big oily mix of like chocolate and uh, this, this big oily mix of chocolate and straight up caramel so you've got that big you do get a bit of a treacly molasses sort of thing to it but there's a lot of sweet caramel caramel in there you can also smell that sort of salty vibe to it as well the chocolate the more that you smell of it the the, the more the chocolate kind of sweetens up and you start to get that kind of milky chocolate vibe out of this beer, which is, is definitely quite interesting. But on the, um, yeah, it has got a lovely milky chocolate vibe to it, this beer. Um, yeah, the milky chocolate vibe on this one, I think, is very, very interesting for sure. Um so yeah, you get this mix. There's a wee bit of darker chocolate in there, but for me, the chocolate you notes know, in this there's a wee bit of kind of vanilla in it. Um, it has a wee bit of a kind of nutty edge to it as well. So yeah, you get that big, thirty percent cocoa milky kind of chocolate out of this one. But um, yeah, aroma wise, this one I think is um, is very very nice. So yeah, big sweet chocolatey. Um, yeah, big sweet. Yeah, big sweet milky chocolate, a little bit of nutty character, a little bit of vanilla in there. Um, the big sweet caramel notes in there. You can smell a wee bit of that leathery character underneath, which indicates maybe a slightly longer wort boil. But the salty caramel notes are in there, the bright caramel. One or two little hints of a McVitie's digestive biscuit as well, I hasten to add. So you definitely get a little bit of that. But uh, yeah, on the malty, adjuncty side of things, this beer is very, very nice. And it really reminds me, as I say, of that old school you know, the Noah Yellow Belly Agamemnon kind of beers, those big cakey Imperial Stouts that we used to get from Omnipoil back in the day that we were always so excited about. Um, this is a lovely, lovely smelling beer, I have to say. Really like this one. Hmm. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Uh, on the hoppy side of things, um, there's not too much to report. You do get a little bit of earthiness out of the beer. Which I definitely like. So yeah, definitely a wee bit of earthiness coming out of it for me. A wee touch of herbal character. Some nice floral. 
yeah, a nice little bit of a floral aromaticity and there's also a wee bit of a kind of grassy uh, note to it as well. So the way that this goes together is um, is very, very nice. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, I think this is, the, the hoppy character in this beer is not too prominent, but you know, it kind of, it makes it makes sense when it's a pastry stout. These are not the hoppiest of beers in that sense. The other thing I would say about this beer is that it does have a slightly kind of cakey vibe to it. And again, this is something that you expect from the style. And um, so it's got a wee bit of that kind of almost chocolate brownie, chocolate cakey sort of note to it. But yeah, there's a wee bit of a, there's a wee bit of a kind of raisiny uh, note to it. And uh, not too much though, bit of a fig and a wee bit of a black berry, black currenty um, sort of thing. So yeah, the way that that goes together is um, is pretty damn nice actually. Um, the fruity notes for me are quite subtle and a little bit dry, but there is a wee bit of an oiliness to them. But in terms of what, as I say, in terms of what you would expect from an imperial pastry stout, it's quite nice. But yeah, I'd stick with that black currant, a little bit of fig, wee tiny touch of raisin and a wee bit of a more oily blackberry character on the fruity side of things. But yeah, the more that you smell this one, you get a wee bit of that kind of cakey vibe to the beer. Uh, but yeah, overall, aroma-wise, I think this one is pretty damn nice. So as I always say, take a wee bit of time to uh, ponder over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think um, it's about time that we have a taste of this beer and see how we go. So yeah, this one is the Imperial Salted Caramel and Chocolate Biscuit Stout at 8.1% ABV from the Garden Brewery in Zagreb in Croatia. This should be quite nice. So let's get stuck into this one then. Slanja, Skull, and I believe it's the same in Croatian, Nazdravje. Cheers. Ooh, that is nice. Um, yeah, for me, just on the first impression, for me, this one finds the, the right balance between being a pastry stout and a sweet stout. It's, it's got just a little bit of that kind of granola thing to it, but it's also got the sweeter elements sitting on top of it. And it has got a wee bit of the old school imperial stout underneath it. So yeah, this this, for me, this really finds a nice balance and I think the thing that put me off pastry stouts before was just how heavy that kind of granola uh, type vibe um, to the beers was and many of the ones that I tried. But this one I think has got the balance just right. This is by no means any way, uh, in any way as heavy as those, um, you know, those Omnipoyo Imperial Stouts. That I was talking about before, you know, those were big, thick, heavy beasts. This one's actually got quite a nice little bit of lightness to it, which makes sense when you think about the climate of Croatia. It's a pretty warm country, of course. Um, but yeah, the way that this goes together is um, is pretty nice. So um, yeah, this it gets a thumbs up from me. This beer, I think this is is pretty damn good. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say my overall impression of this, uh, my first impression of this beer is pretty damn good, actually. It's 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 got a nice bit of lightness to it, but it, and it really finds that balance between sweet stout, pastry stout, and a bit of an old school Russian Imperial stout, but it's, it's nice and drinkable. This is a lovely beer, this one. It really is. So I will need to keep an eye out for some more of these things from uh, Garden Brewery. From what I understand, they've been putting out some New England hazies as well. And I don't think I've tried a New England hazy uh, from these guys yet. So that's definitely something that we should uh, have a look at in the in the near future, of course. But yeah, thumbs up from me. Absolutely. So... Um, yeah, let's break down the flavour of this one and describe it for you. Um, 
really, I'm very, very impressed with this. I, I like this. So, it reminds me in a sense of when I reviewed Dragon Stout, that Jamaican Stout beer, right? Because it's, you know, it's not a, you know, not, obviously the Stout isn't a style that you might associate with, um, with Croatia, of course, but it's a very popular one in the craft beer world these days. But anyway, just a little bit of nostalgia there. But let's focus on that middle third of your palate then. So the base of that middle third of your palate, you can definitely feel a little bit of the roasty toastiness of the black malt. On top of that, you do get a wee touch of the kind of granola. Knecke brood is probably a good uh, descriptor for the Swedes, Danes, Norwegians that are watching this one. It has a wee bit of that kind of granola -y, uh, type vibe on top of the roasty toasty well fired bread crust from the black malt. So yeah, roasty toasty well fired bread crust, a little bit of a kind of granola sort of vibe and then on top of that you do get a little hint of a kind of brown bready character out of this one. And then um, I would say that those three layers are quite condensed together and quite yeah, they are quite condensed together and quite um, kind of pressed, if that makes sense. But um, it really works. It does work quite nicely, uh, this beer, in that way. So, in terms of the... Um, in terms of the kind of sweet side of the beer, because the sweet side of the beer sits on top of that kind of brown bready flavour that it has... Um, the sweetness of the beer, the sort of adjuncty side of things, is really interesting as well. So sitting on top of the brown bread, you can feel that there's a sort of spectrum of chocolatey flavour. So the cocoa is giving you a wee bit of a kind of dryness toward the back of that middle third of the palate. You can feel a slight dryness in the kind of from from what I suspect is cocoa nibs. So you can feel that coming out of the beer. Absolutely. So a little bit of cocoa uh, cocoa nibby dryness in there. But then um, as you move further forward, uh, that cocoa nib gives you a kind of, what, 70, 80% cocoa chocolate. But as you move further forward toward the front of that uh, middle third of the beer, uh, the middle third of your palate, sorry, you start to get one or two other things. So you can feel that it's a more kind of like 30% milky chocolate character in there. There's, um, there's a little bit of a kind of, You get one or two, in that front part of the middle third of your palate, there's a wee bit of a kind of vanilla quality to it. You get one or two kind of nutty notes in there um, and maybe a wee touch of woodiness as well. So you do get a bit of sweetness toward the front of that middle third of your palate. Sitting on top of that chocolatey layer though, you can feel there's a more oily, there's like an oily circle there in the middle of your palate. So it's a big oily kind of sweet caramel. Actually, so yeah, you get that big oily kind of sweet caramelly note in there. It does have a wee bit of a kind of leathery layer underneath, so yeah, an oily, a slightly leathery, um, there is a slightly leathery caramelly note um, under there, but then on top of that you get the sweeter caramel, and as I say, toward the edge of the um, the middle third of your palate, you start to get some kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity characters out of the beer. But yeah, I like, I do like how this one goes about its business absolutely so yeah uh, flavor wise in the middle third of the palate this one has everything that you would want and of course this is the most complex part of a, of a pastry stout and i think it's i think it is definitely fair to say that this one is a pastry stout for sure because it really the further you go into the aftertaste you get more and more of that kind of granola cakey sort of thing out of it but i like it i do like it So yeah, um, let's focus on the back third of the palate then. So that border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a kind of bready build up in there. The base of the back third of the palate, the base of the back third of the palate in this one is um, a kind of more, it does show you a bit more of a kind of bread crusty character. I don't think the black malts are quite as prominent in there right enough, which is interesting. But yeah, you do get a bit of that more bread crusty. Um, you get a bit more of that bread crusty. Big, kind of, yeah, dry bread crusty character. And there on top of that, you get a slightly thicker brown bread, you know, out of it. And there is also a wee bit of a, yeah, there's also a wee bit of a more, um, 
how do we say, you do get a little bit more of a kind of dry cocoa nibby kind of thing creeping over that into the back third of the palate as well. But on top of everything, there's a bit more of a dense yeasty character in there. So you get a bit more of that dense brown bready yeasty sort of thing out of it. There's also a little bit of, um, there's also a little bit of a more kind of, um, how do we say, there is a little bit more of a kind of um, dry, yeah, there's a little bit more of a kind of dryness to it too. So the yeasty character on this one is quite interesting. It feels quite condensed and quite dry in a way. So yeah, a bit more of a dense bready, brown bready doughy sort of thing and a wee bit of that drier character on top of it. So that is most definitely quite um quite interesting. So yeah, thumbs up uh, to, to Garden Brewery on the way that this beer has gone about its business. I do quite like it actually. So yeah, on the uh, back third of the palate, you can feel the flavour is definitely a little bit taller. And then as you kind of move, as you move further forward, um, as you move further forward in the palate, um, it just kind of into the middle third of the palate, it just condenses down a little bit and those flavours squash together actually. So it works quite nicely. Let's focus on the hoppy side of things and the fruity side of the beer. So, back corners of the palate, there's definitely a wee bit of, uh, of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, it gets a little bit herbal, and as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, that herbal quality spreads forward too, but there's a little touch of a kind of floral, aromatic side of, thing, uh, side of things to, to come out as well. So I like that, absolutely. Yeah, nice little bit of floral aromaticity there. And round the front curve of the palette, it's got a wee touch of a lighter, grassy sort of vibe coming out of it. So yeah, some interesting things going on with this um, with this beer. But let's focus on the front third of the palette then and the fruity side of it. So this is where you start to get the more pastry side out of the beer. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palette, you get a little bit of a kind of like cakey chocolate brownie type flavour to this one and that sits as the base of the front third of the palate as well but within that you get a little bit of the saltiness you can feel a wee bit of the kind of salty character coming out of the beer as well but then on top of everything there's a little bit of a kind of oily you get that typical sort of oily bubble where the fruity esters come out of the beer and the fruity side of this beer I don't find to be all that prominent actually So yeah, on top of that, you do get a wee bit of a sharper raisiny note out of the beer. Yeah, there's a wee bit of a kind of sharper raisiny note to it in the beginning, but then it becomes a more, it becomes a little bit more of a kind of, you know, dried, like, like figgy type character. It's got a wee bit of that figgy kind of black currenty sort of thing. I don't get the sharper blackberry out of it, so yeah, I think it's fair to say that the fruity side of things is a more oily, yeah, it has a little bit more of that kind of, yeah, definitely a wee bit of a more, has to be, it de yeah, it definitely has a wee bit of that more, um, it has a wee bit of that more oily figgy character to it, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of a more kind of dry black currenty type vibe, but all of that, remember, is sitting on top of the kind of chocolate brownie uh, kind of vibe. So yeah, the way that this goes together, I think is really nice. This is a very interesting beer and I've certainly been impressed with it. And as I say, I'm not a massive fan of um, pastry stouts normally, but I think this one finds a good balance between being having a bit of the roastiness of the Russian Imperial, a bit of the kind of granola thing that you expect of a pastry stout, but it's also got a lot of sweetness as you'd expect from like an imperial milk stout or a sweet stout or whatever. So yeah, this one has my approval, absolutely. And it's got a lot of flavour when you think about the fact that it's only 8% as well. So yeah, definitely one of the lower ABV imperial stouts that you're going to come across these days. But let's round off the review with a quick look at the mouthfeel then. So yeah, uh, mouthfeel wise, it's uh, mid boy uh, mouthfeel wise. It's 
I would say pushing towards the top end of mid body, bottom end of full body, which is impressive for an eight percenter. Carbonation is very smooth. It does have quite an oily mouthfeel too, and quite silky in some ways as well, which I quite like. It says on the can too that the IBU is forty, which is just kind of interesting. I do like that. Uh, so yeah, the IBU that you're getting on this one is coming a little bit from the black malt, the granola I would say as well, and a little touch from the hops. So yeah, but the malt base, as I've said, it's quite balanced between the kind of grainy bitterness underneath from the black malts and uh, carafa. Uh, was it carafa that was in this? Crystal, sorry. Crystal as well. But smoothness from the bready notes and a wee bit of sweetness and things from the malts and the adjuncts. So yeah, the malt base for me is, is really nicely done in this one. Um, yeah, very well balanced malt base. And you've also got just a little touch of kind of fruity sweetness to it as well. So um, yeah, for me, I really like this one. I think this is a very, very nice beer. So big thumbs up to the Garden Brewery in Zagreb for this. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this review. This one was the Imperial, just let me make sure I get the name right, the Imperial Salted Caramel and Chocolate Biscuit Stout at 8.1% ABV from the Garden Brewery in Zagreb in Croatia. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Garden Brewery. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can return to these guys quite soon. Do let me know some other Croatian breweries that I should check out because I'm very interested in Croatian beer. But thank you again for watching. Check out my social media, check out their social media, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Slanja, Skol, Nastravia, and cheers.